Welcome to this week's episode of Run a Profitable Gym. I am your host this week, John Franklin, the CMO of Two Brain. And with me, I have a very special guest. It is the fittest man in the world, the ex fittest man. Do you call it fittest man or ex fittest man? Or are, are you always the fittest? You know, you know what term I like? Former. Former. For, How about that? The former fittest man, the once fittest man, the founder of NC Fit Gyms, Train Hard Online Training, uh, the host, of course, of the Jason Kalipa podcast, and uh, just a general thought leader and someone the two brain community looks up to as a whole. None other, none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Jason Kalipa. Thanks for making the time to do this, man. We always appreciate when you come on the show. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad I'm here. You know, today's, it's funny. Um, you know, we have a variety of different business verticals, different things going on. But, uh, last night I got hit up by one of our, like, uh, coaching directors and she's like, dude, we could really use your help tomorrow. And, and this has not happened in, in many, many, many months. And, uh, so I went in and, uh, I feel like I was back in the trenches a little bit, coached the 6 a.m. class. So I'm fired up to talk to you right now about all things business and fitness. So yeah, your head's, uh, your head's close to the product right now. And we appreciate that. Um, when I think of Jason Kalipa and I listen to some of your content, uh, one of the things I don't think is like burnout. Have you ever experienced that feeling before in your life? You know, we were talking a little bit about it before the show, but, but you don't strike me as someone who ever gets tired. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, if anything, I have, I have a terrible attention span and I, I, I don't get tired easy. And, um, it's something that, you know, as, you know, from a business perspective, I think it's, it's been great for us. And I also think at times it's been difficult because I have been reactive at times and I've been really working on those things, um, as a, as a leader in the organization that recognizing that if you are a leader in your organization, the skill sets that you have, the rest of your team may not have, or, and they shouldn't, they like, they should have other skill sets. But if you are one of those like hard charger, got to go, got to go. Sometimes that could turn some people off. You need to recognize when to turn it on, when to turn it off. But in general, yeah, I'm that guy. I'm that, uh, you know, just kind of got to go guy. (laughs) Well, look, you're, you're obviously a successful businessman, a successful gym owner. And we talk a lot about that on the show, but one of the things that we care a lot about at two brain is crafting, uh, well-rounded successful entrepreneurs. And it sounds like you've been having some thoughts on what that means recently. Can you kind of, uh, give us an insight into what you've been thinking about, uh, in terms of what it means to run a business? Yeah. I mean, well, if you look at my background, um, when I first got into CrossFit in 2008, there wasn't many business resources and I came from a background where, I came up in the traditional gym system and I was in through high school and college. I had mentors that were very business focused, less coaching focused, more business focused. And when I got into CrossFit, it was very much so coaching focused and less business focused. That was just the way it was. And so over the years, I tried to blend those two and I, I tried to communicate with HQ and other gyms. We did things like box to business. We've done all kinds of different things to try and support gym owners to treat their gyms to create profitable gyms, to provide trajectory for themselves and their family. That's always been important to me. And you could look at my track record since 2008, trying to put out content and trying to share those type of things for better part of almost two decades. And as those like 15, 20 years have came around, you know, the industry's evolved and I've evolved. And I think that that's important to note is that you're not going to be the same leader, the same owner, the same person you were 10 years ago. And frankly, you shouldn't be. And I think it's important to, to speak authentically about the things that you're going through, the things that you experience, the things that you want to share with others, because chances are if you're experiencing those, like other people are as well. And so that's kind of how I've evolved over the years is that you go from a single site to multiple site. You go from having no kids to multiple kids. You go from having, it's just your, your mindset shifts, your, your perspective changes. And I think it's important as a gym owner not to get burnt out to recognize what your why is. And to, you know, reinvigorate yourself on a regular basis of the work that you do matters. And I think that's really important to note. And so things that I've been going through lately is like, what do I want to speak on at the Two Brain Summit? Like, what what is important to me? Because if it's important to me at the time, I could speak passionately about it and speak from experience. And I think that that ultimately will help resonate with the gym owners that are there. And last year, I spoke on the idea of forging elite uh, leadership. And 
it was kind of like a play on forging elite fitness, obviously. And I spoke about three factors. I spoke about, uh, you know, f- to forge elite leadership, which I found was like a, um, at the time I had just finished a leadership course and I was really inspired by the way that this course impacted the way I looked at things. And I didn't think that in our space, we talked enough about leadership. So I felt like I wanted to talk about it and the reception seemed good on this. I spoke about three different things. I talked about, um, the art of detachment. Uh, I talked about AMRAP mentality and I talked about making to give this year. I want to kind of evolve that more and definitely dive into AMRAP mentality, which is about mindset, about prioritizing and executing on what you're doing at that given time. But because of life and because of business, there's other things I want to continue to speak on. I've been kind of having a brainstorming session actually with you just before we started recording on what exactly how I want to mold the talk about what's important to me today. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. I could talk more about it, but I want to give it a second. And I went long winded. It's fine. I was actually at that first uh, box to business summit. I think it was almost 10 years ago now. And uh, yeah, I remember you did a talk and it's like, yeah, if you have employees, you should write down what they're supposed to be doing. And everyone was like, Pfft. and that was the state blowing. of CrossFit business at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, your, your class should be consistent. Everyone was like, this is insane. This is some cutting edge stuff. Um, uh, but that, that's an aside. So yeah, I, I'm looking at your, your train hard site right now. Right. And mm-hmm. I'll pull it up if you're watching on YouTube here. And obviously there's pictures of the man himself just looking absolutely huge. And then on here we have train, protect, provide. Let's talk about that. What, what does that mean? And, and why did you choose to put that in the most important part of your, um, your website? website? Here? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, back to what you're saying. So box of business 10 years ago was like, Hey, um, you know, have your employees as W2, uh, have job descriptions. And it was like, Whoa, you know, start class on time. It's like, Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. have your team wear a uniform. No way. Um, but now it's like, that's just like second nature. You know, um, you have to um, evolve or you're going to perish is kind of like the theory. And CrossFit has evolved and the, and the gym owners have evolved. And for me, I've evolved. And so train hard. So uh, our business today, as of April 24th, uh, 2024, it, it has three different verticals. So we have NC Fit brick and mortar gyms and corporate wellness. That's one. We have the NC Fit Collective, which are session plans, programming, and coaching tools for gym owners. That's another vertical. And then we have the train hard um, aspect. And train hard is a is not for the same demographic. So our brick and mortar gyms are for exactly that. They're for members that could find our locations and join us. Perfect. Our collective is for B two B. It's from it's a business to business model where we support gym owners and coaches. But we weren't doing a very good job speaking to the end consumer who wanted to engage with us, in particular me, and what I'm interested in. And so we rolled out Train Hard as a metaphor for like something that's really important to me. Like I believe that we should train hard so we can protect and provide. And I'll, I'll share more about what that means to me. And, and, and also reach an audience that isn't just CrossFit, meaning I love jujitsu. I'm super into jujitsu. I like the tactical games. I like all those things. And so... I wanted to provide a solution for people who are in their garages or in their gyms worldwide who wanted to engage with us, but couldn't make it in one of our gyms and weren't a gym owner. And we wanted to roll out a brand that was consistent with that instead of it being as part of NC Fit. And I think as any gym owner listening, I think it's a good, it's a good, um, learning lesson that we've had where your brand can't be everything to everybody and following your passion, I think is important. And so for me, that's why we chose to roll off a new brand instead of having it underneath NC Fit, because we were trying to be everything to everybody for gym owners, for brick and mortar and for end users and just came off too much. So this way I could speak on the things that I'm passionate about underneath the train hard umbrella while also speaking about the things that I'm passionate about to gym owners and coaches on the NC Fit side. So let's talk about it. What you're passionate about it. What, what does this mean? What obviously I get the train, I get the train part, uh, what about the protecting and providing and how do those tie yeah. together? Well, this is something I'm thinking about for the two brain and I, I, I'm still kind of, I'm still refining what this looks like and I'm going to test it and test it and test it. When I say test it, I mean, I'm going to record myself giving this presentation. I'm going to really, my goal for the two brain summit 
and I hope everybody listening is going to attend, is to, um, you know, over deliver. Just when people walk away, be like, holy shit, like that guy prepared, he executed, and his goal was to add value into my life and share things that are important to him. That's, that's really important to me, not because of money, fame, none of that. It's because I care. I care that these people are showing up, taking time out of their day and their gyms to grow and, and learn and evolve. And I have a duty as a presenter to give my full heart, my full soul, my full attention into that speech, that presentation, because they're giving their full self to be there. So what does Train Protect Provide mean? And this is something that maybe it'll come up at the two brain. It means that what we do at our gyms matters. What we do in the garage, it matters. What we do as men, as women, as adults, especially those with kids, it, it, it matters. And the if you're a gym owner listening, the, the, the service you provide is going to make a dramatic impact on people's lives. And it's not just going to make a dramatic impact because they come in, they have the best hour of their day, they, you know, uh, grow uh, emotionally, physically, all that kind of stuff. Yes, of course, they're going to they're gonna leave there feeling better than when they walked in. No question. But how about this idea? They come in, they train, or maybe they someone uses our app and they train, and it gives them the ability to protect. And as a father, I can't think of two things that are more important to me than to protect and provide for myself and my family. And, and in most cases, community. I do weekly free workouts for men every week. We've been doing it for seven months here, just in the parking lot. But anyways, when you think about what protect means, I think oftentimes people gravitate towards, you know, uh, fighting or whatever. But I actually think that the likelihood of you getting in a fight, I mean, imagine, like, I don't know exactly how old you are, John, but like, how many fights have you gotten in your life, especially as an adult? Probably very few, right? Uh, Post-college, it's a, it's a small amount, you know? <laughs> very small amount, right? And, but how many times are people listening having to run after their kid, having to go and lift something, having to go climb something, having to go do something to protect themselves or others physically? That happens more times than not, especially for me because I'm out, you know, doing hikes and doing different things. And if you don't have that physical ability, if you don't train, you're not going to be able to protect yourself and your family, especially like, I don't know if you've seen those videos of like the shopping cart with the kid in it that's going into the street and, you know, the person sprints after it and grabs it. That's an example of like what we're providing. But I also think there's this idea of provide. And this one I think is even more important. And this is something I want to talk to gym owners about. We train so we can protect, run, jump, climb, lift, and if needed, sure, fight, of course. But the provide piece, I don't think we talk about enough, which is providing experiences and, and also financially, which I'll get into. But experiences, I think, are so important as a dad, as a husband. My goal is to, all I'm going to have left is experiences with my kids and experience with other people around me. And so I never want my physical fitness to inhibit what I need or want to do ever. I always want to be able to provide those things for my kids. I always want to be the, the dad is like, if the kid asks something like, let's go. And you want to go do this? Let's go. But training allows me to provide those experiences because I'd never have to worry about physically being incapable of doing those. And that is a gift that gym owners are giving to their members every single day. You're giving them the gift to provide, to go on vacation and never have to worry about name the thing they want to go do because they don't have the physical capability. And when you dive down to that deeper level, it's super meaningful as a gym owner to look at the impact you can make across hundreds, thousands, X amount of people and how you're allowing them to train so they can protect themselves and their families and provide experiences. But on top of that, we're also giving athletes another gift which is to provide financially. You know, I'm a big believer that someone comes into the gym, they have a great workout, they mentally and physically are in a better position, and when they go to work, they show up different. They show up more prepared, they show up more uh they show up with better perspective, they show up in a, a clearer state of mind. And I believe that over time they will be able to provide more financially for their families because they're training because they show up with that type of um self-confidence and, and worth. And those are gifts that we're as gym owners giving. And those are gifts ourselves that we can get by training, train, protect, provide. I, uh, 
I talked to Mo from Beyond the Whiteboard this week, and apparently he went to one of your uh, your your weekly workouts, and he said that he felt like he wanted to like run through a wall after he finished with it. So whatever you're doing out there, he said it's pretty magical. Um, I'm a new father, so I, ha- I have two small kids. Th- this idea of providing experiences for kids and showing up and providing as a husband is something I think about a lot because it's so easy to just fall into this rut and this routine. And unless you're like being very conscientious about the way you you show up as a father and as a husband, um, I can see how a lot of that can go by the wayside and turn into bigger problems down the road. Are, I've seen videos of you like working out with your kids. I've seen videos of you like going to the park and, and, and playing with your with your son and, and doing different things. Do you have like a framework or a way you think about, uh, you know, doing stuff with your children or doing stuff with your wife? Is it like every Thursday's date night, every Tuesday's, you know, workout day with, with the family? Like, like, how are you going about and, and thinking about showing up as a husband and father? Well, this is something else that, you know, at at the summit, I, again, I'm right now, you're kind of firsthand, if you're listening to this and you're going to the summit, you're, you're firsthand kind of hearing some of the things that are important to me right now. Right. But date night has been important to me forever. Um, when our daughter got diagnosed with leukemia, the first thing that I was told is keep a date night. And we've been pretty diligent about doing that. And that's a little bit more structured, but I think in regards to kids, and this goes for any gym owner in their business is being intentional. I think being intentional is really all it is. And If you're intentional, if you're really reflecting like, hey, am I doing the best I can with the information I have? If I'm really out there being intentional with my approach as a gym owner, as a as a father, as an athlete, whatever, you know, there's really no way to have regrets. And I'm it's something I reflect on a lot because as an athlete, you know, you ask yourself when you're competing, did I do the best I can? It's like if every day in training you are doing the best you can to prepare yourself for the CrossFit Games, however you stack up at the games. It is what it is. You've put yourself in the best position. That same thing applies, I think, as a husband, as a father is like, can you have micro check ins on a regular basis to see, hey, how am I doing daily? So you don't reflect later on and say, man, I made these huge mistakes because you you were asking yourself on a regular basis. So at that point, you're making the best decision you could. Um, and so those are some of the things that I think about all the time is like intentionality as a dad. You know, my, my daughter's 13, my son's 10. And, um, you know. I think what we do matters as gym owners, man. I, I, and, and just in fitness in general, you know, my, my daughter's getting back from 10 weeks. Uh, she was gone in a residency program for some health issues she's been having and she's been gone for 10 weeks. And as a dad, it, it is, it is so difficult, but the training allows me to stay calm, to stay controlled, to learn these micro doses of adversity that I could then overcome and then take that in our daily life. And I think that those are, I I keep going back to as a gym owner, these are gifts that we're providing to our members that maybe we don't realize because it'll help us stay inspired to leave the two brain summit and keep kicking ass for the next year until the next summit, because the work we do, it's hard. You know, coaches don't show up. This happens, that happens. There's always stuff going on. Right. But the work we do is also impactful in more ways than I think we oftentimes see it as. I think I'm going after you, like right after you in the summit, and I'm just sweating right now. I'm going to get off this call and just start practicing. I'm already, you're, you're, you're raising the game for someone here, you know, at least me, because I'm like, oh my God, I got to go after this guy. Um, okay. So I get it on a high level. I understand the concept. Now, it's a room of it's a room of a thousand gym owners. Yeah, some of them are going to be doing this well. Some of this are going to be some of them are going to be doing it poorly. Like like, how do you live this? How do you live this brand? How do you how how do you how do you live the Jason Kalipa lifestyle and, and train, protect, provide? Well, like, I, I think you know, and the train, protect, provide thing is just like where I'm at, like as a today. But I also think like the lessons that we talked about last year, they're even more important to me today than they were last year. Meaning. The AMRAP mentality, being present, being focused, being, you know, so the AMRAP mentality, this really came to be um, in like 2016. At the time I was trying to, you know, uh, or 2014 or even earlier, I was, you know, trying to win the CrossFit Games, competing year round. At the time we had like 20 something locations, brick and mortar. And, you know, I recognized that unless I prioritized and segmented out my day, like, First off, I wasn't reaching my potential in those different areas. And secondly, like I wasn't going to have strong relationships because I was one foot in, one foot out. I'd be with the kids, but you know, 
thinking about competing at the games. I would be on conference calls, but, you know, trying to ride the assault bike and it just wasn't working. It wasn't working, not being present. And so I started asking myself, like, when am I the most productive? And typically it came from when I'm in AMRAPs. Like if I ask you to do seven minutes of max pushups, like, dude, you're just going to do it. You're not going to stop and answer your phone. You're not going to go talk to anybody. You're just going to crush it. And that was the mentality that I started in, incorporating in my life. And I still do today where it's broken down to certain segments. And I'll just share it with you. So the AMRAP mentality is as many reps as possible. Most people listening know what an AMRAP is. You would then segment out your day. So like, for example, this morning, I got up at five. I went to the gym. I came back. I've, I've now been on uh, three hours of calls or whatever it is. After this, I'm going to go to jujitsu or to the, you know, um, to go train. And I think that's a good example of switching gears and prioritizing. So the way I like to break up my day is when I'm at something, I'm being very present and focused in it. I then switch gears like riding a bike and I then become present and focused on the next thing. And I work hard within that domain. So right now I'm not being distracted by anything else. I'm just talking to you. After this, I'm no longer going to worry really about this conversation. I'm going to prioritize my next thing that I want to do, which is training. After I'm done training, I'll then not think about that anymore and prioritize my next focus, which will be work again. And then boom, as the night comes on, we'll have family dinner, et cetera. And so the AMRAP mentality is, is about, you know, kind of segmenting your day in these micro focuses, being present and focused there, working hard, and then, um, you know, evaluating what your deep why is for each one of those focuses you have. And that's what we've talked about in the past at um, Two Brain. And I think the reason why it's important as a gym owner is that your day is action packed. But oftentimes, I think we're a lot more busy doing, but never actually completing anything. Like we're scrolling Instagram, when we should be just like locked in writing emails back to members. We are, you know, we could prioritize our workouts for an hour or two, but all of a sudden, if you try and prioritize other things, you get distracted really easily. And so you're taking that same mindset into everything we do, I think will support productivity. And I have a full like talk on this. That's going to be a piece of what we'll be discussing at, at the summit as well. So every year after the summit, we have a, a large debrief where we talk about not only the speakers, the people who attended, the vendors, you know, basically like a full teardown. And a universal piece of feedback shared about not only you, but your team was that you guys were incredibly present. You know, you were on the floor. You were not putzing around on your phone. You were engaging with guests off the stage and on the stage. And, and you guys were just like a great partner and a great ambassador. So, you know, I, I've seen you live this and, and I appreciate that. And that's part of the reason why Two Brain, uh, likes NC Fit so much. But, um, just kind of talking with you and consuming some of your content, this doesn't seem like something that comes naturally to you. Just being able to like plan <laughs> and be focused and stay task oriented for long chunks of time. So, you know, how did, how did you develop this skill set? Is it like anything else like training? You just kind of do it a lot and you get better at it. Or was there some type of like, um, come to Jesus moment that allowed you yeah. to make this switch? Well, definitely, you know, you, you have those moments and, and this is a long time ago. It was like, I was, I was walking with my wife, my daughter and, and Ashley asked me something. I just had no idea what she was talking about. Cause I wasn't present and focused there. I was just thinking about the CrossFit games this is many years ago. And I just reminded myself like, dude, what am I doing? Like, what am I, what am I doing? Like I'll get example is for owners who are coming up to the summit. And sometimes I'll see this at, at presentations. I just don't get it. It's like, you're going to spend your money your time to come to something to improve your business. That's the goal. The goal is I want to take something away so my business gets 10x return of what I invested here from time and money. But then when they come, they're unengaged. They're just kind of like sitting there. Sometimes they're even on their phone. It's like, bro, what are we doing? Like, like if you make the decision to commit, like let's, let's go all in. And when we made the decision last year to show up at Two Brain and, and, and coach classes and do all the things, like, the commitment was made. And so once we make the commitment at, to the specific thing, it's like reaching our full potential within that is something I think about all the time. And it's hard for me to focus, but I don't think there's another option because what I, what I refuse, I'd rather feel the tension of me continuously asking myself, how am I doing? Then look back and regret not reaching my full potential on anything I'm doing, even this conversation right now. Like what would bother me even more is finishing this conversation, but I'm super distracted on whatever else is going on. 
and being like, fuck, did I really do a good job with John? And I don't remember even if I answered his question well. Those things really would hold me back. And it's the same thing like when I was on conference calls all the time with Asia. We were opening up like 20 locations in Asia. And I would always be doing it when I was on the bike. And I had to really put myself in check and be like, dude, you couldn't wait like an hour to get on the assault bike? Like just prioritize what you need to prioritize because otherwise you're going to regret those conversations and maybe there was something you missed and that sucks. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. And it's, it's a continuously working circle. Like I don't claim to be perfect at this. This is just something I'm aware of. And that for that reason alone, it allows me to be intentional in my approach. So do you have unscheduled time or are you just one of those mutants that schedules every minute of every day? No, 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 no. So I definitely have unscheduled time because, you know, it's, it's important to also have time to reflect and brainstorm and, and work, you know, on the business and not in it. You know, I, I don't really coach regularly. I, I, from an ownership perspective, I am definitely not in the gyms. Like I'll, I'll go to the gyms, but like in general, I'm looking at it from a, from a different perspective because we have the train hard over here. We have this going on over here, but to, to, from that, it's important that you give yourself time to, for critical thought. And I think that if you jam pack your schedule too much, you don't give yourself enough time for that critical thought. For me, a lot of that happens in the sauna early in the morning or on rucks typically. But if you don't give yourself those allocated times, um, I think that you're missing out and your business won't reach its potential because you're not having free time to, to, to brainstorm. People, people love, uh, love a good morning routine. And so, so is the sauna how Jason Kalipa starts his day every day? Yeah, yeah, no, it, it is. As of, as of the last couple of months, it is. And I'll, I'll tell you why. So it used to be, I mean, well, this morning I was at the gym. Tomorrow morning I got a group of guys coming over. So that's going to be a little bit different, but then we're going to jump in the sauna. What I found is that if you are waking up in the morning with a specific level of stress, for whatever reason, it could be family, it could be business, it could be whatever. And a lot of people listening went through some major stress during COVID. But if you, if you wake up and you already feel like a sense of anxiety, you're not going to be able to attack the day the same way you could if you took on that day with, with a more composed approach. And that goes for the way you talk to your team, the way you talk to your spouse, the way that you show up. And so doing the thing you need to do to feel the way you want to feel is very important. And so identifying what that is for you. If that's a walk, if that's whatever. For me, this sauna is a great way to kind of level set and then jump in the cold plunge. And it just like kickstarts my day like nothing else. And especially, you know, like I said, with, with uh, Ava being gone for the last couple of months, it was a time where my stress was a little bit higher. Kind of like I almost felt like similar anxiety, a little bit different to when our gyms were being shut down for COVID. And I need to do what I need when I know I need to do in the morning to to help me show up for my team and myself, my family. And so that's, that's, that's why that's, that's my routine now is because that puts me in the right state of mind to, to be the best I can. And are you like a 5am every day on like a Chris Cooper, you wake up at, uh, before the sun and, and grind away. His is like writing. So yours is a sauna. He just goes and smashes on a keyboard for an hour and a half. And <laughs> that works for, that's his grind and it works really well for him. Um, so are, are you waking up super early? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely before the sun. Um, but I, not as early, not like five, but I mean, some days five, some days, you know, like we have, uh, we have groups that meet up on the weekends every weekend at 6am. So you know, generally around six, but I think what's important there too, is like, don't get too wrapped up in this morning routine where, you know, you end up spending hours and hours just like doing a bunch of shit because you heard it on the internet as something that's going to help improve <laughs> your life. Like what really matters is like productivity and getting work done. But if, if starting your morning off the right way helps you be more productive and get your day off to the right foot, then that's, that's the key for it. So find what works for you is important. And you shouldn't really, you should get ideas from other people like me or whoever, but you got to find what works for you. So I'll tell you what, as a leader in your organization, it's important that you show up a certain way for your team. There's a lot of stress to show up a certain way. And the only people who know what that feels like is other leaders, other owners. And so coming from an owner leadership perspective, I hear you. I, I see you. I, I know how you feel, how when you show up on calls, when you show up in meetings, you you're the guy and you are the girl and you have to be that person. You have to be 
the inspirational component that allows your team to thrive. But if you're not at your best self, then you can't be there. You can't be that person for them. And so you need to do what it needs to take to show up. And if that's pre, pre-meeting pre meditation, if that's whatever that is for you, you got to know what that is so you could, um, you know, help your team thrive. It's funny that you brought up, you know, having some people over and hang out in the sauna. Like I literally saw, let me see here. I can share my screen. I literally saw a post from Eric Posner. He owns Swerve Fitness, which is like a chain of, of cycle places. He's out of California as well. And, yeah. and he mimicked like the exact same thing. He's like, here's this like life hack for entrepreneurs. I just invite groups of investors, creatives and entrepreneurs together. And we just bake at 200 plus degrees and talk about our you know goals. And he said, that's been like a transformational thing for his network. Like there's something about frying your brain with, uh, with other guys that allows you to think differently or bond in a different level. I don't know what it is, but you know, you make me want to buy a sauna now. Yeah, well, I mean, so the sauna thing, I mean, again, um, what I'm currently doing today, and this is why I said that things evolve. Um, 10 years ago, I spent 90% of my time in the gym. Now I spend a lot of my time outside the gym. I spend a lot of my time in the garage, on the jujitsu mats, outdoors, um, you know, getting into different disciplines and a lot of the stuff like on the weekends, every weekend for the last 32 weekends, I've been hosting free men's club workouts in a parking lot and I don't ask for anything. I don't say anything. I just say, Hey guys, I'm going to be here at this time doing this thing. Come join me. And people would ask like, why wouldn't you just drive them to your gym? And of course I'd want to drive them to my gym. But this is something that is very meaningful for me, and I want to try and remove all the barriers possible. This is not a business thing for me. This is a personal thing that I want to help support my community, be the fittest community in the world. And I asked myself, like, what am I doing to support that? And I wasn't doing enough because there is barriers. And as soon as you start talking about having met your business, now all of a sudden you're talking about money and waivers, and it's just once a week, so it's kind of weird. What are you doing? So instead, it's like, hey, we're going to meet in a parking lot. And if people want to join the gym, of course they can. But um, that's what we've been doing now for 32 weeks. We get a lot of guys out there just to train hard and show up for their families better when they get back home. And that's important to me. That's so cool. The I watched a video of the Go Ruck founder. And I think every Sunday, his like neighborhood, he hosts like a workout slash ruck. And then they all have beers after. So um kind of an interesting idea I kind of maybe I'll have some friends over on Sunday start start the movement yeah. you should the, the you should affiliate this thing you should well, this is a cool the thing about it maybe is, this is like, the business well I mean it's just, it's just like we're trying to get guys and you know this isn't exclusive to guys the ones that we're doing is because that's where I'm initially trying to connect at I am seeing a need especially for guys who want to you know, get together and do hard things together and suffer shoulder to shoulder. I see a need for that. And I connect with that because I am a guy myself. Women should be doing it too, right? hundred percent. But right now that's, that's what I'm seeing. And the bonds, the discussion, it's only going to make me show up better for my family, for, for everybody around me. And that will have value on our business Maybe not financially because you're not going to get people who are going to come to this men's club once a week to join our gym. That's not the intention. It's going to level me up because I'm going to create more bonds and connections and whatever. I'm going to learn more and then I'm going to be able to lead better when I'm back at the gym. So for that, I'm grateful for it. Um, So speaking of spending less time in the gym. And speaking of these other disciplines that you're doing, I actually did a train hard workout in anticipation of this call. So if you notice why my back's so huge, that that's why. Uh, I, I thought I noticed something. You're, why you're, why, yeah, why you're, I'm you're, you're busting out of this thing. chair. I'm, yeah. I'm going to buy another one. It's like triple the volume I usually do. So uh, I'm, get, I'm getting huge. Um, how has some of this bled over into the collective? So in case uh, like the NC Fit programming for gym owners, if at all. Yes. I mean, our flex track is available for the gym owner. And a good way to think about it is like our current NC Fit Collective is is definitely focused for the CrossFit gym. So it's going to have a little bit more complexity in it. The train hard is a little less complex. So, you know, today's NC Fit workout had snatching and and handstand pushups in it. Uh, Train hard would not have those two movements. And it's just a different way of training where Train hard's mentality is more like, how do I create a baseline of fitness to be able to go train, protect, provide? Whereas our NC fit gyms 
uh, I don't want to say they have more sport component, but they definitely have more complexity. And I think that there's benefits to both. I think that one of the benefits to having complexity in CrossFit is that it keeps people inspired and fired up to continue to come into the gym for many, many years. I mean, it's one of the very unique fitness programs that keeps people around for a long time because there are those new skills to chase. But I chased them for many years and now I chase other skills like jujitsu and I'm looking for a really solid program to develop my overall base. And that's what Train Hard provides me. So if you sign up for NC Fit programming as a gym owner, you have access to all these. Uh, I see, I see a little bit compete, flex, go. Uh, they have access to all of those. You have compete, you have flex, you have the NC Fit workout, which has a performance um, and a fitness track, which is great. And you get your daily session plans and all of those good things. I, th I think what we're doing on the collective side is like just the beginning of like right now we're putting out, I believe the world's best session plans and programming. So if you're looking for that as a gym owner, I believe we're putting out the best. We own gyms, they're, they're successful and we use the same plans we use. We also what's have different coach. Like a, what's that? Sorry. What, what's different about them? You know, I'm sure people have tried a couple different services on, on here. This is a, uh, you know, sell away. We want to hear I, it. I, I think for me, it's the fact that, you know, when you could generate, you know, uh, uh, gyms that are doing, you know, six figures a month, I think that there's something to be said about the program matters. And when you have a lot of members who come in and they're providing you feedback, you could adjust accordingly. So it's, it's the daily videos. It's, it's the fact that every workout is tested. It's the fact that it's being tested from coaches who are coaching in a gym. Like we're not a competitor gym. That's just not what we do. We own brick and mortar gyms that are for the general population. And I think for a lot of people listening, that's the type of gyms that they have. So for that reason, I think that we we could thrive in that area. Um, obviously, I think what also makes it unique is that the people that are writing the session plans and testing the workouts are coaches themselves, and they coach regularly. It's not like they just used to coach. Um, I don't write the session plans because I'm not as qualified to now. Like, yes, I'm a CrossFit level four coach. I taught on seminar staff, but I still don't write them because I'm not in the trenches every single day like these guys are. So for that reason, that's why I think we're the best. How are you feeling about CrossFit HQ and the affiliate community right now? I think that um, CrossFit has made a lot of steps in the right direction, a lot. And it's funny because I used to have similar conversations like what they're having now many years ago. And obviously, you know, ownership's changed, things have changed. Um, but I think they're trying really hard to move the brand and the community in the right direction. And my hope is that it's not too late. My hope is that there is growth to be had. Um, but I think time will only tell. I think that they're doing a lot of the right things. And again, my question would be, I think we need to reflect back and, and look back on this a year from now and see if it made the changes that CrossFit wants it to make. Cause I do think, I think they're making all the right pivots, but maybe not, uh, you know, maybe they need to be happening faster to, or maybe they should have happened several years ago to get to the growth that they're looking for. But as of right now, I do think that they're, they're doing the best they can to support gym owners, to grow the brand. Um, but they, you know, they have a lot of, they have a lot of, um, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy being HQ, especially with new ownership and leadership, because you have to thread the line between your OG affiliates and and where the brand was and where it wants to go. And they're, they're still trying to figure out what that dynamic looks like, in my opinion. And I've definitely seen a lot of action happening. Um, yeah. You're obviously thought of as a huge leader and influencer in the space. When we look at our data from the State of the Industry Report, it shows that the average affiliate owner is, is still struggling. You know, they're still making less than uh, the median household income in virtually every market. So, you know, as someone who owns affiliates, travels to affiliates, uh, has taught, you know, however many thousands of people how to do CrossFit, um, if you could affect change across the affiliate community, um, when we're talking from a business standpoint, you know, what would you advise your average affiliate owner to do? Where, where are we running? Where are we running or where are we falling short as a community? I mean, I think in general, this is going to sound super broad. I think in general, it's fine. we need to treat our business like a business and not a hobby. I, I think at, at its highest level, that's what it comes down to is that 
if you're getting into CrossFit because you, you love it and you want to open a gym because you love it, I think that's, that's fine. You could, two things can be true at once. You could love CrossFit, but also be interested in running a very successful, profitable business. And I don't think those are mutually exclusive. And I think that for a while in CrossFit, it was like negative to talk about making money. Um, and I think we need to remove that stigma and recognize that unless we make money, unless we show growth, we're never going to be able to impact more people's lives because you're always going to be hamstrung by, you know, by this, this hobby mentality. And so I think the goal should be as an industry to reflect as, as, a, and say, Hey, what am I uniquely good at? Am I uniquely good as a coach? Am I uniquely good as a leader? Am I uniquely good as whatever? And then identify other people to surround yourself with, with to step up. I think a lot of people, if you look at it like a restaurant, I think there's quite a few people who get passionate about CrossFit who fall in love with it and get life changing results. And they decide to open up a CrossFit gym and maybe they're really good at coaching. Let's just say, but if that's like the food you're delivering on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, the table, everything else matters. Like you can't have a successful restaurant unless you have a nice friend desk experience, unless you're able to make a, you know, reservation, unless you're able to, you know, uh, have a clean, excellent location. All of those things start to matter. Even if the food is great, you probably won't go back again if you can't make a reservation. And so that's a good way to look at the business is like, is how do I take something I'm passionate about, but recognize that it is not a hobby. It is a business. And how do I surround myself with people that could help me set up a front desk procedures, set up business practices, make sure the coach on the floor is excellent and consistent every single time, have a facility that's clean and organized and have a lease that's in an appropriate location. That's what I think the industry needs to look at as a whole. And instead of like, um, you know, I'm opening this up because I love it because you could do both at the same time. So it's not mutually exclusive. You, the people who say that they're doing it because they're passionate about it, that's okay, but make money as well because then you could do it for longer. Well, I mean, I remember, dude, this was like years ago. I'll never forget this. It was like 2009. We opened up our second location. And I remember someone said to me like, hey, so why are you selling out and open up a second location? I'm like, what? I was like, bro, at the time I'm like teaching seminars. I'm like teaching, I'm on CrossFit. I'm like, who's selling? What? what? And I remember saying to myself, like his perspective was that if I wanted to grow, financially to support myself and my family. That's for some reason I was selling out. But at the end of the day, that's the only way this whole thing survives. The only way this ecosystem survives is if gym owners are financially secure so that they could then compensate their team in a financially secure way so that those coaches can then impact the members in an effective way. And unless that system is, is there, it's just going to be broken. And you'll have a lot of gyms with 50 to 60 members that are barely struggling, you know, to get by and they get sold to the next person and sold to the next person instead of looking at it like a business where they could build a thriving community where they could then give to things they care about. And then they could support gym owners with a, a wage that allows them to actually live. So yeah, that's the way I look at it. You heard it directly from Jason Kalipa. Treat your business like a business. And if you want to fast track your fitness business success, uh, you got to come to the Two Brain Summit June 8th and 9th in Chicago. We're talking about virtuosity. Jason is going to give uh, the finished version of uh, the talk we did here today. And uh, there's an incredible lineup of industry leaders all across the fitness industry, not just from the affiliate community. I will say there are only 50 tickets left. That is not marketing ease. That is the actual number. And we are recording this three weeks before it's going to come out. So there may be less. So run over to twobrainsummit.com and we're going to end it here. We really appreciate you listening to this episode of Run a Profitable Gym. Uh, Jason always brings the heat. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment. And as always, Jason, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being a great partner and an amazing part of the community. Thank you for having me.